Welcome back to the Morning Brief right here on Channels Television. This is how we start in our new year and for every day henceforth. This is how you'll be starting your morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. We'll bring you the very best information, breaking news, the trends, and the rest. Well, and don't forget, Sunrise Daily is coming right after this, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it's a bumper package for you. Yeah, we're nice like that. Absolutely. We're switching gears now. We're talking about a, a sector that has done so much. Uh, for not just the Nigerian economy, but the image of our nation blazing the trail. Yes, government or no government, as they have said. And we have joining us right here in our studio a face you're probably used to in a different kind of environment. We have brought him to our studio. We have joining us Femi Adebayo. He is an actor and director. Let me just add a lawyer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy New, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New it's Year to see you. you. Yeah. I know a lot of people I've seen you on screens they probably haven't gotten enough of you, but thinking of you as a lawyer, I just wanted to get that part out of my head. <laughs> do they, when the judges see you, I don't know when last you were in court, but did they well, go, well, are you serious? Are you or are you <laughs> well, I, I, I was called to the Nigerian Bar 2003. Yeah. So I practiced for two years before opting out of litigation. You know, so of course, then <laughs> when I started before the um, court of law, well, I feel so good. I mean, announcing my appearance, may please your lordship. <laughs> you know, and some judges were like, ah, is this the same man I'm seeing? Same actor? And yes, and some judges will even go ahead and ask, you can't, you know, practice and at the same time be in the entertainment industry. Mm. You know, I used to tell them then, well, I wasn't into full-time entertainment. Then. Right. So when I wanted to go into full-time entertainment, I opted out of litigation. You had to pull out. In 2005. Oh. Why did you opt out of litigation and choose the movie industry, by the way? The passion is more in entertainment than the law. Okay. You know, I, in fact, I wanted to study law from the beginning of my life. But, you know, I, I felt acting was going to be just a hobby. That, you know, okay, it's my hobby and all that. But it's pulling me more than law is pulling me. In fact, I, was, I struggled with it at a point. When I was called to the bar, after leaving um, practice, I went ahead to do my master's in law, thinking at all least right. let me even take up, you know, lecturing in Japan. But the, the, the uh, entertainment keeps pulling me, you know. But you had been in Hollywood, I mean, from your father, the whole family literally. So By the way, it's quite interesting that you actually wanted to study law. Yeah, yeah, that has been my dream from onset, you know. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I, I've always meant to ask you, by the way, why the, did the entire family choose Nollywood? I know your brother is also an actor. Yeah. yeah you have two brothers who are acting. Yeah. You are acting. Your dad is an old-time Nollywood face. I think it's more of a divine arrangement, like I asked my father. My father had never, at any point in time, I mean, forced any one of us to go into acting or entertainment. So all of us studied totally different courses, and we find ourselves there. You know, so it's more of a divine thing for that Adebayo's name to become a household one in the entertainment industry. <laughs> and what a year it was for you, I must say. Last year, I don't know if it was your biggest year yet, but it was definitely a huge year for you with your movie, Jagu Jagu. Very you know, true. Breaking records. I know a lot of people probably see you on the street and they twitch their neck. And <laughs> <laughs> because of the character you play, yeah, some right. people knew you as Jelly Lee before that. But talk to us about 2023 uh, for... Nollywood now, what was the year like? We see you on the screens, we, we, a lot of people think, oh, you're doing great. They don't know the story, the challenges behind what you do on screen. How would you describe 2023, really? 2023 was a fantastic year for me. It was a year that I had a rapid growth in my career, I must say. The biggest year for you? Yeah, the biggest year I sat now. You know, I'm so extremely sure, sure that 2024 is going to be bigger than 2023. Yeah, you know? I see you celebrated <laughs> the number of endorsements. Yeah, because um, it has always been my dream to celebrate my culture to the global world, you know, and... You know, when we were young, we go to school, they teach us in English, we speak English, you know. And unfortunately, when we are home, our parents also want us to speak English. That's why, that's why the fact that my father is a core Yoruba film producer, mm. you know. But he's always insisting, am I so Yoruba? No. Am I so Yoruba? No. Find a balance. You know, find a balance. But I was, at some point, I was tired of English. I saw the beauty in Yoruba culture. So when I had the opportunity of, you know, preaching the culture to the world. I intended, you know, to showcase the beauty of it to the global world. And I started with, I guess you call it King of Thieves. 
you know, did well. So Jagun Jagun did it for me. You know, it was globally accepted. You know, and that's why I'm going to say, for me, in my career, 2023 was a very fantastic one. But, but that's not to say that um, it was fantastic for you, but yeah. generally for the Nollywood industry. Yeah. Uh, what were the challenges? I, I know there's always a talk about there needs to be some sort of more government participation, enabling environment, because largely a lot of people say Nollywood, I mean, maybe the music industry as well, Afrobeats, it was just individuals, groups championing the cause, going out there to mm. give Nigeria that good image which it has right now. So what were the challenges really? For me, I'll, I'll categorize it into two you know, categories. One is um, an enabling environment. You know, we need more conducive and an enabling environment. But what does that and when mean? And when I say that, yeah. you know, that's, that's, you know, uh, th that means, you know, a lot of things. We can actually talk about, oh, security. We can actually talk about finance. You know, recently I saw on um, social media where some of my colleagues keep shouting and begging the government to create security wherever we're filming. You know, we have all these rights our boys go disrupt it. That is, so when I say enabling environment, it includes the security, the funding, and all that we have. That industry is about, for me, the largest industry that, you know, gives room for employment in Nigeria. In fact, in the world. Wow. Mm. So it should be taken care of. That is one. Then secondly, of course, we can't totally eradicate Paris. Eh? Mm. You know, those are the major challenges that I see in Nollywood. Yeah, well, but it seems like there's a, a lack of consensus in what Nollywood really needs. You know, I recall that Alibaba, we had him on our show um, sometime last year, and he was saying that, look, at the time when they met with the federal government under a different administration that he advocated not funding now, you know, but a conducive environment um, in the form of policies that will reduce piracy. Mm. So some members of Nollywood, I, I know that Jire Kosoko canvassed for the new administration to mm. provide you know, access to loans interest, not necessarily interest-free loans now, but single-digit loans for um, Nollywood uh, content creators. So what does Nollywood really need when there is a lack of consensus among practitioners about what the industry needs? So we, we heard different views and opinions. You know, uh, for Alibaba, all it thinks is security. You know, but for me, those are my two major areas. You know, and living environment, like I've explained, and the you, you know the piracy so for me i must acknowledge the fact that we've had grants over the years for some from some administration even this present administration you know we've had grants you know um, during jonathan's administration there was loan and grants as well but we are saying we need more you know and particularly um i'm conversing for what i call um community cinemas you know, so there are a lot. Pardon me, I just wanted to ask, can Nigerians invest in Nollywood? Can individuals say, you know, I want to invest in a movie, how viable it is? Because I've been thinking about it. There, there are lots of private people that might say, well, I have some loose cash, I want to invest. Yeah. I mean, yes, they invest in the stock exchange. Is there a way, is that something that is happening right now? If it isn't, is that something you're thinking of when Nigerians can say, you know, I have this 10 million naira, let me invest and I'll get my returns? Yes, in the last 10 years, I'm going to say no. But today, I'm going to say yes, without blinking. I'm so Nigerians can actually invest they in, are in what even way? doing that How? presently, you know, because, well, let's, let's give thanks to, um, you know, international streamers that we have. You know, we, we, we now, you know, being accepted all over the world. And so that gives that, you know, confidence to investors that, okay, if I invest an amount of money, I'm gonna get back my money. So it is, you know, encouraging to invest in Nollywood now, I can tell you. Yeah, and there you have Jagu, King of Jagu. Thieves oh. on the screen. No, this is Jagu, That's Jagu, Jagu. Jagu, Jagu. <laughs> Well, a lot of people might try to want to translate. What's the translate? What, what's the translated to in English? The Jagu, warrior. warrior. The warrior, right? Yeah, so Jagu, that's Jagu Jagu, Jagu right there. Yeah. And that's the set. How much of that's work it. went into this? How long did it take to shoot? What kind of manpower? Because you talked about employment generation. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about Jagu Jagu. Okay, so Jagu Jagu, okay, we, we had a training for about two weeks and we shot for about 45 days, you know, wow. in the city of um, Oyo, 
you know, your state. So, like you can see, look at the manpower that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So we had um, over <laughs> 700 people. And that's you the right there. For the five days, yeah, that's me. 700 people. people. Yeah. And for, they, for the five days. And they all get paid very oh, well. Oh, sure. They all got paid. Almost you know, a there was a contract. Very well. Yes, relatively well. It can be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we they all had contracts they signed. You know, we we can imagine it's a it's a big scale project. Like you can see, we fed them for for the five days. We accommodated them for the for, for the five days. days. You know, over seven hundred cars. What was talk, the talk budget? About, I just talk, wanted to. What was the yeah. budget and what have you earned from it? Because that's usually a thing. The budget and then the earnings. So in far. Nigeria, we always we always oh, we hide it in Nigeria, Nigeria. <laughs> so nobody <laughs> will come to you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, we always you know you know running away from the precision of figures, mm -hmm. but I can tell you it's large, and of course it's worth it. Well, why why do we run away? Because you can just go online, check the the budget for a blockbuster movie. You'd see the earnings. There are so many reasons that we can't even tell. It has been a trend. Just don't mention figures. Just but, but mention. some of your colleagues, you know, celebrate their success. I know from Kakidele, you know, tweets about what her movie has grossed, you know, in terms of earnings so far. Okay, so for box office, if you don't have a choice, it has to be disclosed. Like King of Thieves went to the box office and did like a 322 million naira. You know, that was in Aiden. So I think it's one of the rules of the, you know, Sean Association to disclose whatever, you know, films make at the box office. Unlike streaming. Unlike streaming, yes. So, so talk to us now about, um, you know, what is on ground in terms of contract agreements, you know, for the protection of um, the rights of your artists who work with you on set. I know that when you are done with the production, they've been paid and they've gone. But when you make... 300 million naira, 322 million naira that you quoted now, is there anything that ensures that they get uh, proceeds you know, from that earning as well? Or it goes to the executive producer? It's actually more of um, personal agreements, you know. On a normal day, the practice is, okay, you get paid for the job and you leave. Because so many times you cannot even, you know, predict how, how well the movie is going to do. You know, so most actors prefer that, okay, just get... I mean, let me get paid and leave. Mm. You know, why now some can envisage and say, okay, I'm going to take this amount of money and so, so I mean, percentage on the project. So it's more of a personal arrangement. And, and, you, and you pray that the movie will do well, so at least you'll be earning something afterwards. Do you understand? I, I want to know what you're planning for 2024, naturally, and I imagine a lot of people want to know. Maybe they want to see you do the impression of Jagu Jagu as well. I'm <laughs> you've asked him to do like that. So many people have asked me and continue to ask me. They keep me, asking you about that. Jagu -Jagu too? Is there Jagu Jagun too, is there going to yeah. be Jagun Jagun too? Well, there is going to be a There is going to be. This year? That I'm not sure, but <laughs> there is going to be a Jagun Jagun too. And uh, as filming begun just yet? Is not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah. Will I, I want to use that platform to give so many up and coming opportunities to you know partake in that. Mm. I, I, I want you to also talk to us about um, uh, piracy. You said you, there's no way you, piracy can be ruled out of the industry as one of the core challenges. Mm. But since the advent of taking movies to the cinemas, we've seen less and less of you know pirates, you know, uh, selling uh, mm. CDs mm. on the streets. Mm. So how significantly has that um, aspect of filming reduced piracy for my sister? CDs practitioners? is even you know out of the, out of um, extinction. It's it's not there again. Who uses CD? So they probably are not. How doing do that. they do it now? You know, you can do that, that's I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Online. It, online piracy for me is my nightmare. I tell you, okay, I'm presently in court in a matter. I actually sued a particular platform. You know, you know it's very funny. Somebody take Jagun Jagun, for example, and you know, put the poster and a different content on probably YouTube. Right. Mm. So people, are, people want to see Jagun Jagun too. The moment they see Jagun like Jagun, they click on it mm -hmm. and you make money. You know, there are a lot of that. Cinema's fine perfectly, um, um, I mean, controlled, you know, but everybody can go to the cinema. Jagun Jagun did not even go to the cinema, you know. So we have to protect those that are doing business with us so, so that they won't get out of business someday. You know, speaking and of I the, believe that policies can help us. Can help, that definitely. Yeah. I know there's still that debate, streaming or go to the cinema, cinema, which is better, which is the future, which even pays you the more. more. But there's this uh, conversation we need to have, and that's what happens to actors. 
even maybe during their career or when they have retired. And we've seen a series of actors uh, come on asking for help. Mm. Some of them, uh, I mean, just recently there were reports about um, Zach Oji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had previous reports about Mr. Ibu mm -hmm. and, and the rest. So these are scenarios people see and yeah. wonder what exactly is going on with Nollywood. We see you as people that are doing great. You successful. act successful. Mm. You, you, you act as rich men in movies. Some of you live, I mean, good lifestyle. So what exactly is wrong? So that goes to the personal arrangement you have for retirement. You know, so many of us are educated now. The world, even without going to the four walls of the school, you can say this is what is good for me. How do I plan my life? But so many of uh, actors are probably negligent of them, um, or I don't want to say they are ignorant of it. They're probably negligent of let me plan my life properly. There are so many health insurance policies, you know, that can actually take care of when you are tired or when you are sick. We cannot always run to government or individuals all the time. You know, there should be exceptional cases that we have to run to. Sometimes you plan and it is not enough. Mm. At those points, we can run to individuals or government. You but, know. but a viable insurance policy also flows from, you know, the capacity of the actor as, um, you know, uh, an agile practitioner yes. in his heyday. So that brings us to the point of what's the earning of an average actor in Nollywood, particularly for people like um, Mr. Ibu, um, Zach Oji. These are A-list actors. So what do they go home with per film? So, my sister, I can confidently tell you that an average actor, like you have mentioned, is capable of a very, very good health insurance policy. I can tell you but that. But do you make up to 10 million per movie, per 20 movie. million per movie? Is that. You don't even need to make up to that before you can plan a health insurance policy, my brother. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I can tell you, whatever you make as an average actor is okay for you to have a I mean, health insurance policy. You know, this has been a very interesting conversation, and I hope that we've opened the eyes of people, government, mm. to the opportunities, pitfalls, how to make Nollywood better yes. in the new year. But you have to give us a new year. Uh, present yeah. uh, for me. We didn't see the like Jago Jago character, of, really. No, 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 Kadi, I'd like a recall of the Jalili character. That made me, okay. that put me in stitches. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you could choose for the viewers, but I bet they want to see something. They want to see something. This to close the segment, really. All right, so let's go to uh, Jago Jago. I knew that. Okay. <laughs> she, like, you want Tanya to tell you what you want. I think that's like the most popular line right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's exactly. Boy, it's been a pleasure having you on, on the program. Much. If case you didn't know, he's also a lawyer, not just an actor, director. He says, expect something new in 2024. Something bigger than Jack Jack something in 2024. Something bigger in, in 2024. Trust me. Uh, but is, is it more, uh, and I know that this might put you on the spot, but is it more um, viable to go streaming than box office? What determines the choice you make to either go for the streaming platforms or to just release it in box office? Well, you right you actually you have actually put me on the spot <laughs> well for me both are good both are good it depends on what you want for yourself sometimes you cannot take away that cinema feel mm. for me it's always fantastic and you know more interesting when you watch movies or the cinema, cinema. so you can't take that away you know, and then of course at the streaming platform, what we can also not take out the fact that when your movies is going to cinemas in Nigeria, it's a lot of work on the producer. Mm. It's a lot of work, especially publicity. You can see the likes of Funke, Messi, Tony, and the last three, four months they've been on social media, you know, advocating, advertising their projects. You know, while if it's on streaming, you might just do little. Because they you take know. it over and do all of the adverts and the you, publicity. Not all. The majority you know, but, of it. You know, you, hmm. you, you share that um, particular. Um, so there's less work that goes into streaming as against uh, mm. taking the work well, for the me, cinema. you know, for me, I prefer the two. I like them. Right, best yeah, of both worlds. You'd rather, you'd rather not take a position. Very diplomatic. Very smart. Like <laughs> okay, but, but talk to us now about um, um, the, the numbers and the locations. The Film and Video Census Board says that Nollywood produced a record, nearly 2,000 movies in 2023 alone and that speaks to potential you know that supports the onset of our conversation about the, the empowerment of young persons and all of that um but why 
does Nollywood still prefer to take um, a lot of our movies outside Nigeria to shoot rather than shooting in Nigeria? Or you can also um, correct that perception if there are still viable locations in Nigeria where uh, Nollywood movies are shot. Well, I think locations are determined by the storyline. You know, they have a story that says Femi goes to London, you know, runs into trouble in London. Um, I'll go to London. Femi has to go to London. Yeah. <laughs> And look at Jagun Jago, for example, it's an epic movie. I need to go inside the rural area in all your town. So locations are determined by the storyline. That's the way I say it. And speaking of location, there's an interesting fact that I discovered. Uh, the Film and Video Census Board says two, in the first quarter of um, 2023 or second quarter, 281 movies were shot in Abuja, the FCT, okay. whereas 133 movies were shot in Lagos. And you would have thought that, hey, Lagos is the capital of Nollywood where well. all of the movies are shot. <laughs> so what's informing that uh, departure from? I think if those storylines are, are more of the glamorous look and beautiful houses, and probably the producers have more comforts in Abuja than Lagos. You know, I don't know. I can I can film anywhere. I can film anywhere. Okay. They they always say that there's rivalry in Hollywood. Uh, ah. That's something we hear from time to time. So when this person movie comes out, they're like, oh no, man, I I can do better than that. Is is that still a thing in Hollywood? Do you have someone you respect a lot in Hollywood? Maybe uh, some of the people you're like, oh, these are my people really in Hollywood. I appreciate so a beautiful project. I appreciate beautiful projects when, when I see them, you know, but I, I don't see it as rivalry. All right. So many people were, you know, encouraged and motivated after I did King of Thieves and Jagun Jagun to produce more of epic stories. You know, it is no rivalry. It is motivation. So I don't see it as rivalry. It is very normal for films to, you know, you can leave that rivalry position to fans they'll come up with anything you understand so i look up to of course the likes of my father in the industry you know unfortunately they didn't start when it was really really making waves like they can make more money i can confidently say that we are making more money Way than, more than they are <laughs> you know but they started it but but i always hear that you know there are certain actors that can be on the set of certain directors vice versa certain directors that will not work with certain actors yes you might say the fans bring up these things naturally but they also see what happens uh, behind the scenes they have an insight into that so i don't know if that's healthy for the industry if it's something that you are aware of if you if it's not a thing you can let us know well that's for me it's it's very very unhealthy for the i mean for the industry if that is you know in practice but professionally i don't think it is it's very unprofessional for you to do i mean decide director or actors you want to work with. So you don't have anyone that you're rivaling right now? Not at all. I work with anybody, I go anywhere to work. You know, most of the times I don't even ask, when I pick up my script, a script, I don't even ask who is playing this role until I get to set. Mm. Mm. So you can imagine, I'm not interested in knowing who. So your top five movies of 2023? Ah. <laughs> I know the top two for you, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know the no. top two who <laughs> will yeah, help me. But you know, I don't want to, I don't want to preempt. <laughs> of course, my... Your movie. So of course. I didn't want to preempt, so hey. Of course, my movie, Jagun Jagun, for me, is, mm -hmm. is uh, my, of course, number one yeah. for 2023. You know, there are quite a lot of beautiful movies, you know. I saw, um, um, from cast tribe called Judah. Yeah. You know. Messi's Adama Daddy, Twins Malaika, you know, those are wonderful films that I've seen this year and I have to saw Breath of Life, you know, fantastic movie, Black Book, you know, those are movies that I can say, yeah, for 2023, they did very well. And, and, and there's another trend, you know, that has emerged in the last decade or so, the harmonization of the industry, where yeah. those who are traditionally um, Yoruba uh, yeah. movie actors are found more in, in the English space. Yeah. And the, the use of both languages, really, in a lot of the movies, yeah. how has that helped the industry? Well, yes, you have spoken it all. <laughs> it has really helped the industry. And for me, it's one of the joy that I'm seeing in the industry presently. I'm so happy about that, you know, harmonization and, you know, and synergy. We even coming together to, you know, co-produce, 
the English, the Yorubas, even the Hausas. So most of us now, when we write scripts, we must infuse other tribes. And it's beautiful what Nollywood, as I said, mm. is doing for the image yeah. of our nation. You have Nigerians out there, uh, that's all they watch, really, and they've been able to sell it yeah, to so even... It's so beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. My coming movie, um, I'm, I'm a Yoruba married an Igbo woman in the movie, and the Igbo tribe, you know, supported the, the husband that is a core Yoruba king. They supported with their traditions and everything. Beautiful. Is that coming out this year? Yeah, that's that's one of the films you should look out for this year. Do you want to tell us the title? Cross cultural. Yes, I can tell you the title for free. It's Seven Doors. Seven, Seven doors. doors. Yeah, watch out for it. Seven Doors. It's gonna be big. There you go. So you heard it here. Seven Doors. Yeah. This year. When? For the first time. On is the it, morning. Is this the first? Is this the first time you're talking this about? This is the it? first time I'm saying it. Anywhere. So there you go, exclusive right here on Channel <laughs> Television's Morning Brief, Seven Doors. When is it coming out? Uh, Mid-year? Mid-year, yeah. Mid-year. Mid -year. Mid -year. We'll, of course, be looking forward to that and, of course, uh, yeah. premiering. Have you started shooting yet? Done with filming. I'm at post. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Do we have time for more um, on... on Yes, it's, it's New Year's Day. It's New Year's Day. I'm going to be saying this for free. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be filming Jagun Jagun 2 this year as well. Right. You know, so I'll, I'll give them an opportunity, like I said, I'll give opportunities to, you know, up and coming actors to, to partake in Jagun Jagun 2. What about the, uh, I know there's been that issue, uh, influencers, online actors, skit makers, you've found a way to incorporate them yeah. into your movies. We've yeah. seen. Macaroni, for example, mm -hmm. was in your movie, mm -hmm. and a couple of others. Um, yeah. Elisha's son was also in your movie. Yeah. Uh, do you think that conversation takes away from their talent? Uh, I'm talking about the talent of these skit makers. People saying, I think it's just trying to be, uh, you know, you just find the easy route, bringing them because they'll bring their followership, their clout, and all of that. Do you think that takes away from the fundamental of this industry, which is your talent? It doesn't. It doesn't. I must sincerely say that in Nigeria, and the practice is, if I'm talented, I want to exhibit my talent, showcase my talent in any way. I can tell you for free, 70% of those skit makers, influencers have attempted, you know, being filmmakers, but because they didn't work or they didn't get limelight, they started there, they go back there. Right. So it's comfortable for them to say, we're coming back here. Mm. So. It doesn't take away anything. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if you still want to talk about skit makers. Let's talk about the exposure of the industry. But we'll, we'll, do, the we'll do that after we come scene. to this break. Don't worry, we'll still have family with us <laughs> okay, for okay. much of the time. We'll take that issue when we return, definitely. Yeah, You're still right. watching The Morning Brief right here on Channels Television. Femi Adebayo is with us. It's New Year's Day. It's our New Year special, but it will continue, of course, until uh, after this one. So stay with us. So welcome back to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. We're reaching you live. We've been having a very wonderful time out with our guest Femi Adibayo, who has told us uh, a number of things that he's up to for 2024. And of course, um, you know, his um, um, understanding about the issues affecting the industry as well. We still got him in the house, but right now we're going to be taking uh, some of your tweets, your reactions to a number of events that have taken place today. So we're starting with a field marshal of the Han Dynasty at General Oluchi, and he says, no grief for anybody in this 2024 Stand your ground. Well, <laughs> curious. Is that the image of the vice president you used there? <laughs> Femi, is that your goal for this year? To no grief for anybody. No grief for anybody. <laughs> no, that's not my goal. You're <laughs> going to grief for some people. Uh, I go grief for some people. <laughs> it makes some people grief for me too. <laughs> I like that, right? So give and take, essentially. Yeah, live and let live. And that's a good balance to it. Take a look at this one from uh, Loaded Brother. It says, uh, don't let anybody use happy new year to sneak back into your life okay that's an angle you left them in 2023 for a reason this year no, no grief, grief for anybody looks like that's going to be the title of the trend no for, for today no yeah, grief for anybody <laughs> okay wow what's next okay this is from eludayo and he says tinubu is talking now you won't go and listen by yourself make a shot summarize he say 
iluti le gongo make you no grief for anybody. <laughs> well, I listened to the president. I didn't hear those words I didn't hear exactly. Those. But <laughs> I didn't hear those words at all. Well, that's about three people talking about no, no grief, grief for, for anybody. anybody. I, I don't. I don't know what your take. What do you? What is your take on social media and the different angles to it? A lot of people say in Nigeria, you don't need to subscribe for anything. Just stay on social media and you'll be entertained. But it helped your movie. I saw what social media did for mm. Jagun Jago. Negative. Mm. Positive, what do yeah, you say? Yeah, no yeah. publicity is bad publicity. But if it's no negative, publicity. it's even good. So yeah. what's your take on social media? X <sighs> and the rest. It's extremely conflicting in my mind. Right me. now. If you tell me to take a position, I don't know. Living without social media, I don't know how we're going to live with it. Mm. I don't know if we can even live without social media. But I just believe it can be controlled. I believe it should be controlled. But, but social media also provides inspiration for Nollywood sometimes. You know, for instance, Absolutely. the president's um, famous Emilio speech, you know, provided inspiration for movie makers who produced something in that fashion. Yeah. Even for skit makers who, you know, who went to town and produced... You are correct, my sister. Boss. Uh, did you look at social media from the angle of so many depression, I mean, depressive contents? Mm. You know, some people go on social media, showcase their you know, affluence and get some people so depressed, wanting to kill that, 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 that is bio. We went to the same secondary school. Bio drives a Lexus now. I can't even afford a bicycle. You know, there are so many things. That's why I said it should be controlled. Social media gives opportunity for, I'm a Yoruba man, I believe so much in respect. Social media gives opportunity for, you know, extremely younger people to insult an adult and get away with it free. And you know even what the stand of that particular person you are even insulting. I, I think you've had a fair, a fair share of that, really. Not directly. Not directly, unfortunately. Not directly. But I see, I can see. And social media also helps my, you know, my career. Publicity and Publicity. press. Publicity. But you know, during the elections, the build-up, there was a lot of attack back and forth. And I think Nollywood actors got a fair share of it, particularly yeah. those who declared support for a candidate. Serious lash. You came under a lot of uh, support. Uh, did I say support? <laughs> or attacked as well. Am I correct? Not, not really. Not really. You know, because probably I, I didn't come out to say I'm campaigning for a particular candidate. Openly. You know, openly. Um, so many of my colleagues that actually came out like, we supported this. They got it. Mm. It's been quite a wonderful time with you, uh, Femi. We had to hold you for longer because yeah, a lot of people fine. of course wanted to see more that's people would like to thank you so much we've been chatting uh, with Femi Adebayo actor director lawyer Jalili <laughs> Jamchagu <laughs> now seven doors coming yeah, this year I thank you so much I still want to see Jalili okay. <laughs> so maybe I'm just find Jalili in the studio Jalili will fart oh. okay. <laughs> we have a screen here we have to anchor now but thank you so much Femi Adebayo wish thank you the you very best this year thank you so much